Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Walking by Faith podcast. My name is Brittany Shy, and today I'm going to be talking about an important subject that needs to be discussed, and that is about gay marriages, gay people, homosexuality. Is this the only sin? that we focus on that we as christians focus on no okay this is not the only sin that we warn people to repent from okay but this particular sin is legalized and probably all 50 states in the united states of america most states in america have legalized gay marriages okay this is completely an abomination to the lord and it is a deadly sin if a person does not turn away from it completely okay the first scripture is first corinthians chapter 6 Starting at verse 9, it says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. Okay? There's a difference between two people. I'm going to show you two different types of people. Okay? Okay, the first person, person A. They're battling with homosexuality. They're battling with same-sex attraction. They may be even battling with pornography, okay, or any other type of sin. But they know the Lord, they believe in Jesus, and they are starting to no longer have a desire to participate in this sin. When they do this sin, it makes them feel regretful every time it makes them feel sorrowful every time they do this sin and they are constantly asking the lord to deliver them from this sin if you're dealing with homosexuality pornography or anything else and you're battling with it and you feel sorrowful every time you do it sometimes you may even feel like you you feel good about it but yet Most of the times you feel like, man, I shouldn't have done that. Why did I do that? This is not pleasing to the Lord. If you continue to ask the Lord for forgiveness and you continue to ask him to deliver you completely, deliver you from this sin, that you're you're taking the road to repentance. You're taking the steps to freedom. Okay. That's person A. Person B. Okay. Person B is completely just disobedient they have no desire to repent from their sins they have no desire to even know jesus or even care about what jesus thinks about what they're doing to themselves and to others they don't even care what others think about what they're doing they they only care about themselves They only care about what's in it for them, how they can benefit from this sin. Nobody can tell them anything, okay? And even person B can be delivered, but it's going to take the power of God. And I've seen it happen through many Christians telling their testimonies how they used to be that person B. They, They used to be that rebellious person that has refused to repent until something has happened in their life 
until they met God with a personal encounter supernaturally. They went to hell. They experienced something to where it has completely changed their lives. And they were able to say, you know what? I surrender. I'm no longer who I used to be. Okay. But let's just say that person B didn't have any supernatural encounters or didn't have any desire to please the Lord in any kind of way. This person, if this person does not repent from their sins, okay? Or even if it's just one sin, if they have not repented in their lifetime and they pass away, they die, That person is not going to heaven. That person is going to hell. Not because the Lord hasn't given them enough time to repent. Because he has given us all time, day after day, week after week, year after year, month after month, year after year. Like he has given us plenty of time to make it right with him plenty he lets the sun shine on the just and the unjust he lets it rain on the just and the unjust why because he wants everybody to make it he wants everybody to live forever with him why because there is a hell there is a hell that's completely opposite of the presence of god the presence of god is not in hell And it is the lake of fire. Darkness forever. There's no more sunshine. No more beautiful days that you get to see today or in every day that we live to see by the grace of God. There's no more food. No more uh, success in our accomplishments. No more nothing. Just death. Just pain, torture, fear. Is it worth it? I always ask the question, is it worth it? What does it profit for a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? If we gain the whole world and never accept Christ, if we do whatever we want to do when we want to do it, and expect to have no consequences if that person does not surrender to Christ no they will not make it and there was a podcast that i mentioned this this is something that is so important committing suicide is not a continual sin it is a one time sin that you do not have a chance to repent from That is one of the most dangerous sins you could ever commit against yourself. Please do not commit suicide. If you have ever attempted to commit suicide, that is not what you want to do. Please ask the Lord to deliver you from the temptation of wanting to commit suicide. I don't care how hard life gets. It ain't worse than hell. Okay? Because... Whatever you're going through in your life right now is only temporary. It's only temporary. Everything that's happening on this earth right now is only temporary. So whether it's good or bad, guess what? It ain't forever. But guess what is? Heaven and hell. Okay? So please, if you know anybody or if you yourself are dealing with this temptation... Please talk to the Lord. Ask him, Jesus, please deliver me from this urge. Or if you know somebody, please deliver this person from this urge to wanting to commit suicide. Because it is not something that you can take back. You can't take back your life. Like, I've... Thank God there there has been many people who have tr- attempted to commit suicide, but yet they are still living. Yet God says, no, you are not leaving yet. This is not your time yet. 
because we don't have a right to take our lives. But I just wanted to bring that up because somebody may be thinking like, okay, well, maybe I can just end it in my life altogether and it'll be all okay. No, please do not think that. But let me tell you this, okay? Those of you who may be battling with homosexuality or may be battling with uh, same-sex attraction, if you are battling with these things, consistently ask the Lord to help deliver you from those things, from the attractions, from the sin. Keep asking the Lord to deliver you from it, and he will. He will deliver you from it. Because when you start to repent, like repentance is not always an immediate thing. When you hear a preacher or teacher speak to you about a sin and they tell you the truth in love, that doesn't mean that you're going to repent right away. But what it does mean is that now the truth is in you. Now the seed is planted in you. And now the, the Holy Spirit is working in you to have a desire to change your ways and completely be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now you are becoming a new creation in Christ when you no longer have a desire to dwell in this sickness, in this sin, okay? Once you have repented from the sin and have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now you have a desire to please him. You have a desire to tell others about him and where he has brought you from and how he has delivered you. We are all created by God and he has always desired for his people to be fruitful and multiply, to be successful, to live an abundant life, to live in freedom. And he still has a plan for us to live forever with him in his kingdom hallelujah that's why he sent his son jesus to die on the cross for our sins because he took our place and he rose again on the third day he died for us he took our punishment we were supposed to die for all of our sins we were supposed to be stripped down to the core but God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to take our punishments, all of our punishments. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. This is John chapter 3 verse 16 through 18. So, will a person who is sinful enter into the kingdom of heaven? Only if they repent from their sins. They have to repent from their sins at some point in their life. And I encourage everybody to not wait until the last minute. Some people die from car accidents, from airplane accidents, things that you can't control, things that are unexpected. It's like whoa like all of a sudden i didn't expect to to get into this accident and so we have to prepare ourselves now before we get into any of those things god forbid 
Because if we are not ready, it's going to be too late. This is the time. We have time. We have a chance now to repent. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We are not promised tomorrow. So don't think we have that much time just because God has given us so much time in the past doesn't mean we have so much more time in the future because we don't know it can be one more day left it can be one more week left it can be one more year left we don't know we've seen people just fall out and die just out of nowhere it's like what happened what happened People are just dying left and right nowadays. We need to get, we really need to get right with Jesus today, right now. Because we don't know when we're going to leave this earth. We don't know when our last day is going to be. God can take us out just like that. And do you think a person is going to enter into heaven if they don't repent? Absolutely not. And this is why I'm making this podcast early in the morning at three o'clock in the morning. Three, what time is it? It is currently 340 in the morning. I'm supposed to be asleep right now. I'm supposed to be getting my good rest. But guess what? The Lord has strongly put it on my heart to make this podcast and I couldn't go to sleep. So I am sacrificing my sleep just for the sake of you all listening to this podcast so you can all understand how important it is, how serious life is. We cannot just blindly live our lives any kind of way and expect to have no consequences to our sins. This is why we bring awareness to people. We bring awareness, awareness to people. We bring awareness to people of what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is evil. That's it. If a godly person is speaking up for us right, please do not think that they are being judgmental, okay? Jesus told people to repent. John the Baptist told people to repent. Many, the prophets, before Jesus even came, told people to repent, get their life right with God. Why? Because we care more about souls than about opinions. The Bible says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Okay? This is what Christians have to go through every single day. Okay, we cannot conform to this world. We cannot go along to get along with the world because the Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. So if we are being friends with this evil world, with the worldly agendas that are completely going against the word of God, then we have become enemies of Christ. So even if we are not directly participating in a certain sin, if we are condoning a sin and not helping people to repent, we're we're, we're not helping people, we're not warning people, we're not praying for others, we're, we're not caring for people's souls, we're not helping them to get right with Christ. We're not leading them. We're not pointing them back to Jesus Christ. We're just going along with the flow. That's a lukewarm Christian, a person who proclaims to be a Christian, yet does not warn people to repent, yet does does they just want to go along with the get along. They want to just let people be and let people live how they want to live. And yet they choose to live how they want to live themselves by just going to church every once in a while or going to church every Sunday. Yet they live a completely different lifestyle outside of the word of God. Guess what? That is a lukewarm Christian. You know what what happens to lukewarm Christians? The Bible says he will spit them out of his mouth. 
So imagine God spitting a person out of his mouth all the way from heaven, all the way down to the pits of hell. That is a long way down. I don't want to be a lukewarm Christian anymore. I used to be a lukewarm Christian, not knowing that I was living a double life. But guess what? God gave me grace. He gave, oh, thank you, Jesus. He allowed me to see another day and another day and another day. And he has been patient with me until I finally come to the realization that I had to change. I had to repent from the things that I used to do. Okay. So the Lord knows your heart. He knows all of our hearts. He sees us. He knows us more than we know ourselves. He knew us before we were even born. Before we were even formed in our mother's womb, he knew us. And so, thank you all for listening. I pray that you all will be blessed. And I pray that this message will reach many people because there are people who die every day and we cannot expect to think that everybody's going to make it into heaven unfortunately that's not the truth but we can do something about it and we can win more souls into the kingdom of God but it starts with us it starts with us changing it starts with us repenting so that we can tell others about Jesus and how he has delivered us and how he has brought us a mighty long way and how we can live forever with him how we will live forever with him and be free once and for all so thank you all for listening i'll talk to you all again soon bye bye